Well, hello and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and today I am going to be doing my own card of the year reading. Um, I decided to just record this live um, as I'm doing it, so I have pre-shuffled my deck. I've picked out my card of the year and now I'm going to lay out some additional cards um, to kind of see what 2022 has in store for me. And uh, I'm not, not not nervous. <laughs> that is to say, I am a little bit nervous about this. Um, I've actually been putting it off a bit, but um, that's okay. I think that's natural. And we just have to remember that this is, you know, general uh, guidance and that, you know, we are um, in control of our own decisions and reactions. And so that's how I'm uh, approaching this reading. So um, let's look at the cards and we'll start laying them out. So here is my card of the year. It is corresponds with card number seven in the Major Arcana, which would be the Chariot in most decks. Um, in this deck, the Gaian Tarot, it corresponds with the Canoe. Um, and I like this image a lot. It's definitely got the, um, the self-determination aspect of the Chariot here. Um, with our rower, uh, who has a very determined look on their face. Uh, they look quite serious and, and you know, muscles uh, straining and all of that. So they're, they're putting in the hard work. Um, but they also have some companions and some helpers around them. So that's, um, you know, I guess good, good to see. We know that we're not on the journey by ourselves. Um, so let's just get to it. So the first card is um, what aspect of this card is the most prominent energy of the year? And that is the Ten of Earth. The next card is how to put that um, energy into play. And that's the Elder of Water. Um, the obstacle that may arise this year for me is the Ace of Air. And then how to deal with this obstacle, sort of the advice card, is the Two of Water. So, yeah, normally I would have time to kind of hem and haw and write these down and, you know, let the person on the other end um, be a little concerned about me. Uh, you know, taking notes and not saying anything, <laughs> and uh, I don't have that luxury here because here we are. Um, but I'm stalling anyway. What do I want to say about this? I don't know. Um, it's really, these two cards are kind of throwing me for a loop because the Ten of Earth um, to me would be about a completion and, and maybe it is, maybe it's I've completed something in my life and I'm moving forward to the next thing. Um, I can't help myself, but this was a card that came up in a reading that I did for a friend recently. And it was really about her coming out of her hermit year. And so even though I don't feel like I am coming out of a hermit year myself, um, that's not the energy that I had last year. Uh, really, but um, what this does point to is starting a new, you know, going down a new path, and that certainly ties in with Buddhist studies. Uh, we talk about the Dharma as a path to enlightenment. Um, that's the metaphor. So that that seems to um, align well, I guess, with the plans I already have to continue with my Buddhist studies. I'm entering class number two of three um, in this particular lineage that I'm studying with. And it's a real meat and potatoes kind of class, so um, it's going to take a lot of energy, a lot of uh, stamina um, to continue on with this. So that's that's interesting um, that the cards kind of agree with me in that sense. Um, in terms of how to you know harness this energy or work with it effectively we have the elder of water so that would be like the the king of cups um in a traditional deck and here we have another guy in a canoe and it's sort of interesting as i was um i i split this deck apart into the five suits and and reshuffled them thoroughly before 
um, I shuffled for my question here today because I wanted to make sure that um, I really was getting like a fresh randomization. And I was looking at these two cards and another one that has a, um, you know, a man uh, with water in it. And I thought, well, this is kind of like their life path. You know, this is them as a younger person. Here they are as an older, mature person. So um, the imagery here is really striking to me. And also just the fact that they're both in a boat. This guy's in a canoe and he looks very, you know, he's physically straining and he's in a rowboat. Um, or he's in a canoe rather and then this guy's in a rowboat and he's sort of languidly floating along on, on this lake and you know I can't even tell if he's actively rowing or if he's just kind of hanging out holding the oars um, so maybe maybe that's a cue not to not to go balls to the wall here maybe to just let it happen still be in the vehicle still be on the water but you know um, use some wooden wisdom um, some inner wisdom and some emotional intelligence, which I definitely feel like um, is something that I've been cultivating more of, or at least trying to um, get in touch with my more emotional side. I, I tend, especially in, in areas of uh, life like my work, to just be very pragmatic and very analytical. And sometimes we do need to be more in touch with our feelings in order to um, to move forward on things. So, um, and certainly, you know, explorations of Buddhism brings up tons of emotions, <laughs> lots of stuff coming up from the depths. And, you know, we have to be uh, prepared to work with that as part of our studies. So, so that's an interesting tie in. In terms of the challenge, um, the Ace of Air is an interesting one um, in, in a challenge position in this context. So we think about aces as being gifts, as being opportunities, but maybe it's about not trying to come up with a new idea, you know, not, um, or not having too many ideas at once. Um, that's something that often does happen to me too. When I'm excited about something, I, I get very scattered about it because I'm so, I have so much excitement and I want to study all the aspects of it. Um, but maybe just focusing on one thing at a time. Aces being linked to ones. Um, and just concentrating on one thing. Rather than being full, pulled in a bunch of different directions. Or by many different currents. I guess to continue our water theme here. And then uh, the thing to kind of fall back on. Or the advice to fall back on to face this challenge um, the two of water and this has to do with connection. It has to do with uh, love, um, but not necessarily romantic love. Um, although my partner is very, very supportive of me in all ways, um, including my, my kind of uh, newfound interest in Buddhism. Um, but I also see this as kind of uh, working with my self, my inner self. Um, kind of forming a partnership with myself uh, to continue on this path and possibly even forming a partnership with community. Um, I did have someone from my Buddhist studies uh, class come over and visit in person the other day. Um, she just happens to live in Vermont as well and I thought that was, you know, um, just a fortunate circumstance that I wanted to uh, I wanted to enjoy. Um, and so we had a great, you know, a great visit, a great conversation. And so maybe, again, keeping in mind that personal connection as I go through this path, um, we're not alone. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it on my own. I'm doing it in community with other people and, um, there's support there. Uh, there's mutual aid there, um, to do it. So, Wow, fascinating. Um, I I had all kinds of uh, maybe preconceived notions or ideas or maybe even hopes of what I wanted this reading to be, and it was um, very different than what I imagined it would be, but it was also really good. So I, f I feel happy about this, and I feel like, um, you know, this is definitely something that I can... Um, I'll make a copy of these and keep them in my journal this year and just sort of keep them in mind as I work 
um, through my year. If you would like to learn more about this spread, I did do a recent video where I did um, card of the year sample readings for a bunch of people. So you can learn more about the spread and learn more about um, how to do the reading yourself. I'll link that in the comments below. Um, and otherwise, I'd just love to know if you've done a card of the year reading for yourself or if you choose a card of the year, um, you know, whether that's calculated on a birthday or whether that's just uh, one that you'd like to choose to sort of inspire you throughout the year. Let me know in the comments um, what you do and, and how you work with that. And uh, until next time and my December reflections video, which will be coming up very soon, uh, I will see you then and be well. And thank you very much for being here. Bye-bye.